On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes in Afghanistan. In 2001, an international coalition led by the USA invaded Afghanistan. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. To protect our citizens, our friends, and our allies. I have two words for you, predator drones. Our objective was clear, the cause was just. Our NATO allies and partners rallied beside us. At the height of the conflict that followed, there were more than 130,000 NATO troops on the ground. An estimated 47,000 Afghan civilians died during the last 20 years of conflict. In April 2021, new US President Joe Biden announced that the remaining 2,500 US troops would be withdrawn from Afghanistan by the 11th of September 2021. I've concluded that it's time to end America's longest war. It's time for American troops to come home. By the middle of summer, almost all international forces had been withdrawn. The U.S. left Afghanistan in August, but launched a new economic attack on the Afghan people. After the U.S. pulled out of Afghanistan, we imposed crushing sanctions so they, the Afghan government can't access $9 billion of their own money. The U.S. has also frozen over $1 billion in humanitarian assistance from the World Bank. That's what makes recent decisions by the White House so consequential and some would argue so shocking. Last August, the U.S. government froze $7 billion in assets held by the Afghan Central Bank. Seven months after the U.S. finished its withdrawal from Afghanistan, extreme poverty continues to ravage that nation to the point that some are resorting to selling their kidneys just to feed their children. Afghanistan is on the brink of mass starvation. Every single Afghan province is considered food insecure or even in crisis. 23 million Afghans need food assistance. 8.7 million are nearing famine. 1 million children face acute, severe malnutrition and could starve and die this winter, far more than died in 20 years of war. Schools have no money to pay teachers because the banking system is inoperable. And the healthcare system is near collapse because international assistance that was the source of funding has been frozen. For weeks, Hardia had nothing to eat. Her mother could no longer breastfeed her and the family couldn't afford to buy milk. 14 days ago, they brought her to this hospital in Kabul. She was much worse before. Here she's fed milk every hour and she can keep it down. The family's situation has severely deteriorated in the past few months. Prices have skyrocketed. I have three sons and a daughter. We were able to buy food, but recent developments have hit us massively, especially the devaluation of the currency and inflation. I'm a widow and live in someone else's apartment. Nurse Sakina Yusufi would normally look after five patients. Now she has over 20. The number of people currently seeking hospital treatment far outstrips capacity. More and more of the children we see here are malnourished. Satara comes from a suburb of Kabul and brought her son to the children's ward. My husband is a teacher. He's not been paid for the last three or four months. I sold a ring so I could bring my son here for treatment. The family can only afford tea and bread to eat. We can only keep the children here for a maximum of two months. We can't keep them any longer because we have to make room for other children. People come to us from all over the country. The children only go home once they're well enough, but often they're back within a few months when their parents have no more food left to give them. Son of Saddam, written on a piece of tape stuck to this child's chest, is all that identifies him. With each shallow breath, his chances of making it grow thinner. This ward is packed. Frail, sick babies lined up next to one another in beds meant for one. Almost a third don't make it. That means four or five of the babies in this room will die. In a Kandahar hospital, the tiniest of lives are on the brink of starvation. Their bodies have not had enough to eat. Their parents desperate because they have no money for food. They are the faces and the cries of a forgotten crisis. A crisis of hunger putting nine million on the cusp of famine. 
and half of all of Afghanistan's children at risk of dying. Out on the streets, there is desperation and despair. In Kabul, we found 11-year-old Mehraban, not in school, but offering to polish shoes of passers-by for a few pennies. <laughs> While there is plenty of need, there is little hope. Farishta is just a year old and not getting enough to eat. Her father is dead and her mother has no means to feed her. Two-year-old Nisar Ahmed weighs 17 pounds, almost half a healthy boy his age. His mother, Sakina, told me she's worried about her other children, still at home and hungry. What can we do, she tells me. This is our life. In the neonatal wing, all six tiny babies are here because they're underweight, born to malnourished mothers. The doctor told me only one in three will survive. Little Mohammed here is absolutely tiny. He's two years old. He weighs just about 11 to 12 pounds. He should weigh something much closer to around 30. He's just skin and bone. His mother doesn't have the money to get the medicine that he needs. A few weeks later, we go back to check on the two-year-old. He was in the hospital again, so weak, he could no longer open his eyes. For millions of souls across this benighted land, every day is a fight to survive. And when all hope is gone, some parents are doing the unthinkable. It's normally the girls who are sold first. And when the pangs of hunger become too much to bear, some families sell their little boys too. Everywhere, people are being forced to make the most appalling choices. These men show scars on their abdomens. They say they've sold their organs for food. Life for so many has become a living hell. I couldn't go out and beg for money, so I decided to go to the hospital and sell my kidney. That way, I could at least feed my children for some time. The organ trade isn't new in Afghanistan, but it's just got more desperate. <laughs> Every single person here is hungry, and poverty is driving already poor people to even more extreme measures. This man tells us we've no choice. We've already sold our kidneys. Now we've got to sell our children. We've taken efforts to conceal their identities for their own safety. It's a highly conservative society, but I'm allowed into a room with the women. They agree to me filming their scars, some just a few months old. The women have sold their kidneys for less than the men, around $1,500 an organ. There's a lucrative trade with many organs going to Iran, but the money's still not enough. Most of these women are still teenagers with multiple babies but few rights. And now they're being forced to sell their children so they all have a better chance of survival. No one can tell me to sell my children, but we're struggling to keep them alive, she says. And that's why we've thought of selling them. Maybe better for them and we get food for the others. Millions of Afghans are in a slow death march towards famine. The world's largest humanitarian crisis looms. In this bleak midwinter, there is snow on the mountains, a chill in every heart and only the coldest comfort for a family of six children. The oldest is 14, the youngest just one. Their father is dead, they are destitute, and their mother is desperate. We first found her at the local market, her children laid out like goods for sale, begging strangers for help, but help there is none. So for a few pennies, they polish shoes. It does not earn them any kind of living, not even enough to buy bread. They have barely a roof over their heads. Their stove is stone cold. The baby is sick with fever.
یه چیز خدای ندارم مجبور هستم نه پیسی نان هست نه چای Today's boots on the ground belong to the army of urban poor. The economy has collapsed, there is no work and little relief. In this place we have no money, no doctor, not even a piece of bread, says Tawus Khan. Most of the children you see here, they're orphans. Their fathers have been killed in the war. But now we will discover peace brings no respite. A child appears at the door. Her father makes us an astonishing offer. He wants to sell. If there is anybody to buy, so I'm ready to, to sell it. They work miracles at the children's hospital. They need to for babies like Hazibullah, whose survival seems against all odds. Amina fights for breath, her malnourished body unable to fight off infection. Her mother tells us she will stay at her bedside until God decides her daughter's fate. <laughs> خدا دی سوک به وزله په دی دنیا نه پیدا کی چې به وزله پیدا سو نو ما به ولې خپل ځان به بدا سی د غو کې ور کول غو مجبور هم سوک نه لرم چې قدر روز خود ګوش نه خو شدی هم نیست Are your feet cold? 10-year-old Nakibula told me his father died in the war and his mother has no work. He and millions like him now wholly dependent on aid to survive. 23 million people in this country need urgent humanitarian aid. Combating hunger is a fundamental pillar of our faith tradition. Of the earliest revelations, brothers and sisters, even before Allah legislated prayer five times a day, even before Allah legislated Psalm of Ramadan, even before Allah legislated the zakat. Imagine before you had to pray, there was one commandment to worship Allah and the second commandment that came down in the Quran. The second commandment was to feed the hungry. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جِزَانًا وَلَا شُكُرًا And the believers are those who give of their own food even though they need that food but they give it to others and they give it to the faqir, to the miskeen, to the prisoner of war and Allah says when they give of their food they say to the person don't thank us, don't thank us we are feeding you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you give to others Allah will give back to you it's very simple when you give to others Allah will give back to you for how long will we give for as long as we're happy to receive simple as that for how long will we give for as long as you want to get from Allah you will continue to give and give and give and give and on judgment day as long as you continue to show your generosity with whatever you have just give and give and give and Allah will reward you in this world and of course in the world to come 